Hello everyone. Welcome to CAC Homeopathy Study Group Pro Bono Webinar. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. So nice to see many of you from different countries and different time zones. Before we start our webinar, we always thank universe for giving us this great opportunity. And Dr. Shrejam, our CAC coordinator, will start the session. Hello everyone, myself Shreeja Iravalli, CAC coordinator. Welcome to respected speakers, chairman and CEO CAC, Kavita ma'am, volunteers and all the attendees to the CAC webinar. CAC Homeopathy Study Group Pro Bono was organized and founded by homeopath and humanitarian Kavita Kukunur, president and CEO of Kavita Holistic Approach. This study group is intended to be an offering from Kavita to the homeopaths around the globe sharing goodwill and solid clinical work within the classical model are foundational principles for CAR. CAR's mission and vision are very unique to inspire young homeopaths, mentor, provide excellency for educational purposes using holistic approaches via webinars, which are based on principles of classical homeopathy and provide professional continuing educational homeopathy credits for practitioners. We provide merit certificates for spreading the light of homeopathy around the globe. Dr. Kavita is a member of Kevin Friendly Foundation, a non-profit organization that helps to serve poor people in greater needs in India. She is the recipient of Martha Allman Community Service Award by National Center for Homeopathy and Best Entrepreneur Award for, from Dr. N. Lingaraju, Principal of JSPS Homeopathic Medical College, Hyderabad, India. We are extremely happy and proud that we celebrated 10 years of our book, Beyond the Limits, a Ch challenge to prove herself. At, <clears throat> and at CAR second annual celebrations, our honorable guest of speaker, Dr. Jawahar Shah, chairman of Enlightenment Education, launched audiobook and hard copy of her second write-up, A Dose of Spirituality with Kavita. Dr. Kavita donated the proceedings of the book through CAR study group platform to various charitable organizations and homeopathic associations. To name a few are Kevin Friendly Foundation, CHC, DHMA, JSPS College, BT Seva, NCH, etc. We will share the recording link in the Zoom chat box and interested ones can have the glimpse of the book. Purchase link will, will also be shared. As of now, we have over 250 plus recordings on the professional webinars related to homeopathy, health-related topics and inspirational talks available on our channel, Kavita Kukunur. This webinar is moderated by Ka family, myself, Dr. Sheja Aravalli, Ka coordinator. It is being recorded as we speak and we are live on Facebook. We will take questions at the end of the webinar. We will post the jot form in the Zoom webinar chat at the end of the webinar. Please fill it to, to receive your certificate. If you're watching live webinar, <clears throat> email us at ka study group at the gmail dot com. Kindly mute yourself and turn your video off for better connections. Thank you, ma'am. Over to you. Thank you so much, Dr. Shrija. She's dedicated and manages car activities so well. And we have Dr. Nupursha, our car volunteer. She would like to speak. Dr. Nupur, you are muted. Hello. Uh, hello, everyone. Myself, Dr. Nupur, CA volunteer. I am glad to be a part of CA, uh, CA study group Pro Bono. I would like to make privilege to read the code of ethics. To be a CA, uh, CA speaker need at least one to two aspects volunteering. Only CA speaker team are promoted in newsletter and webinars. CA provide volunteering for uh, two to 12 months Respect, uh, respect and inspire volunteers to grow. Active volunteers will be promoted, uh, promoted through our website, social media, and add, uh, added to WhatsApp group. 
articles of volunteers will be posted on ka web uh, web uh, website and newsletter and will be uh, will be sent for pu publication at other journals too active volunteers are elig uh, eligible for prestigious ka annual award volunteers are eligible for ka inspirational talk volunteers are eligible for case discussion ka promotes homeopathic organization as well as their mega event ka promotes uh, ka promotes great work of speakers through their book uh, reviews honorable guests may propose their future uh, courses or even after the webinar ka maintain a healthy and happy environment to keep only like minded folks ka request everyone to maintain the confidentiality of the group over to you ma'am thank you so much dr nupul she is our enthusiastic ka volunteer and both dr shreej and dr nupul are the best volunteers thank you all i thank ka homeopathy study group entire team for the continuous selfless support with which we are able to make our pro bono activities and webinars so beautiful these webinars are for educational purposes only and should not misuse any of the course content without speaker's permission always seek an expert homeopath for treatment being an outreach coordinator of chc pr committee hna cpd provider encourages homeopaths to become chc certified and to participate at hna accredited cu webinars today may 15 2022 we have two honorable speakers with two interesting topics the real of the imponderables homeopathic color and sound remedies holy water gem exilers prayer remedies by ambika waters and the road to clinical mastery through live case analysis by dr sharam abujade it will be two hour session and might extend 15 to 20 minutes more to take more questions we had both speakers last year at our ka webinar and we are very glad to have them today we have second speaker coming right after ambika's webinar so please stay tuned until the end of the webinar let me take privilege to introduce our first speaker honorable speaker ambika waters ambika waters is an experienced homeopath from arizona usa and is director of the institute of life energy medicine she is a spiritual teacher and healer she has traveled extensively living abroad for nearly 30 years and learned from many teachers in different countries ambika lived in the uk for 10 years where she studied classical homeopathy she received a masters in fine arts from the royal college of art london in 1972 later trained in homeopathy at the school of homeopathic medicine north yorkshire UK receiving a diploma in homeopathic medicine in 1995 she is a qualified and a member of prestigious society of homeopaths UK in 1996 she has 50 years of clinical experience working with people in a healing capacity in the united uk she taught homeopathy at cranfield school of business management to business people suffering from the stress of long haul travel she brought homeopathy into visa international national piatkas publishing and the john lewis partnership which operates over 35 businesses in 2005 she started the school of spiritual homeopathy in chicago and later in tucson it it ran for 5 years before she became ceo of the institute of life energy medicine the school of healing which is now a completely virtual school allowing people around the globe to partake of classes purchase products and benefit from online classes and private consultations she contributes to both national and international homeopathic journals sharing her developments in energy medicine and healing she is author of over 30 plus books life energy medicine book her book bible it took nearly 20 years of her hard work i knew ambika since 2008 and she's highly positive knowledgeable and helpful 
I took privilege to enroll into her courses and learn color and sound remedies, which I extensively used in my practice and saw great results. I shared my tiny bit of knowledge about clinical application of color and sound remedies at Hanuman Day Glo 72 Hours Global Marathon with over 68 world renowned speakers and over 72 sessions hosted by Enlightenment Education as tribute to Dr. Samuel Hanuman. I'm so honored to get Ambika's new book, Releasing Shame, Guilt, and Martyrdom as Mother's Day Gift. At the end of the webinar, we will provide her contact details. So if interested, anyone can purchase Color and Sound Remedies and many of her books. For more information about her books and classes, visit her website, www.lifeenergymedicine.com. And let us first welcome our first speaker, Ambika Waters, to our webinar. Hello, Kavita, and hello, everyone. Thank you very much for having me on your program. Shall I start? Yes, Ambika, I'm sharing the screen, please. Okay. You can see my screen, right? Yes, yes, well done, thank you. Okay, my... Uh, Kavita gave me a beautiful introduction and I'd like to say thank you for that. I've reached the point where I am in my late 70s and have decided to slow down my clinical practice and devote a lot more time to developing what I call the realm of the imponderables. They call me, they have called me in and it started with the homeopathic color remedies which came out of a tutorial in 1990 in the north of England with Ian Watson. And he said, you can make homeopathic remedies out of anything. And I said, can you make them out of color? And he kind of scratched his head and he said, why don't you try and do that? I'd had about a month and a half of homeopathic studies in my first year. I hadn't really read the organon. I mean, I was, Beyond a newbie, I was totally ignorant about what was in front of me. However, I was curious and had several lucid dreams. I was also given the old um, journal, one of the original journals from the Society of Homeopaths, in which Nula Ising from Ireland had had lucid dreams as well about proving granite can't remember what else, but granite was one of the first provings that came out of a dream. So I didn't feel so awkward. Somebody else was having dreams and encouragement to, to pursue the realm of the imponderables. And I learned how to make remedies. Um, I took small little tumbler glasses, put them on mirrors, little cosmetic mirrors, put a gel a theatrical gel, which is made of celluloid on top. And then I put this tray in the sun in the North of England on the winter solstice. When I say sun, there really was no sun, but there was light. There was about six hours of daylight. And I left them in the light. And then I fixed them with alcohol, fixed the water with alcohol. Ian Watson came over and he was turned out to be one of my neighbors in the north of England. We lived in the Lake District and he showed me how to potentize a remedy. Two of my mates from college, homeopathic college, came over and were willing to prove um, one of the colors, but they didn't know what they were given. One was the man who had eczema on the folds of his arms, both arms. And in the emotional history, he said he had been married for many years and never fought with his wife. Never, ever fought with his wife. Been married 12 years, which is kind of unusual. <laughs> anyway, the other one was a, a, young, a young fellow who was studying homeopathy, who was a mountain climbing guide, very rugged type, very strong, physically strong. So I gave them each a drop of pink. They did not know what color they were given. They called me the next morning and they said, you have something. The man with the eczema, the eczema completely cleared up on both of his arms and he had a fight with his wife, which meant it impacted him at the, at the emotional level. 
and the rugged uh, mountain climbing guy, he just started to feel confident for the first time in his life that he could really learn homeopathy. He had learning issues and um, he said, I, I feel confident, I feel I can pursue these studies. So that encouraged me to find more provers. I lived near the largest Manjushri Buddhist uh, sanctuary in the Western world. It was uh, in, near Alverston in, the nor in Cumbria in the north of England. And I went there because they had, they drank the same water, they ate the same food, they had the same spiritual practice. They lived in community. And when I read Han about Hahnemann on the provings, it was this cut down the variables and see what they have, in, what people have in common. So I got six provers, six people volunteered to prove a, a color remedy. One was a, a Buddhist nun who was very short and very uh, squatty. She, she had a very thick body and she suffered from rheumatoid arthritis. Another was a young man who was going to take vows to become a Buddhist priest. He was in his early 20s. He did not have a lot of confidence in himself. But the others, I don't remember, but these two provers still, you know, all these years later stand out so strongly in my mind. I gave every prover a drop of indigo blue and took their case every day. I had the original case that I'd taken, but every day I asked that wonderful question we always ask in homeopathy, and what else? And what else? So it was interesting. The, the nun who had rheumatoid arthritis broke out in boils down the liver meridian of her body on both sides. Boils. But she was out of pain. She had no None of that horrible, aching, breaking pain of, of rheumatoid arthritis. So she was detoxing. It created a level of detox. The young man who was going to become a priest told me a really interesting story. This uh, is to happen five days after taking the remedy. They live near cliffs over the sea. And some of the, the young uh, devotees at this uh, Buddhist center would dive into the ocean. It was really dangerous and he was terrified of it. But he did it. He, after taking the remedy, he said he had all this courage and he did this plunge from these cliffs into the sea. And the other, I said, you know, and what else? He said, Five women fell in love with me this week. I mean, that in itself was, I said, could you explain that? He said, I met, he never had met women. He was very, he was celibate and he was very uh, disengaged from, from the feminine. And women just found him attractive. And he wound up leaving the monastery and going down to London, got a job, and eventually married and had a family. I saw him nine years later at a uh, mind, body, spirit fair. He came up to me and he, he thanked me for the remedy and told me what a wonderful life he, he had developed. And I, it was really about courage. For him, it was the courage to go and live a life and take on the responsibility of family and children and a job and, and get into the flow of life. He got the courage. And the nun was really relieved of tremendous pain. So again, without knowing much homeopathy, I had to dig into my studies. It took me eight years to do the provings. And there was not a tremendous amount of enthusiasm for my teachers. I had some extraordinary symptoms show up. I had one prover who, who got a cold after taking um, green and she threw out um, her mucus was uh, 
very tinged with the color of green and blue. Things happened. I, I met Rajan Sankaran at a seminar in London during those eight years, and he said, very interesting, send me your findings. Ian Watson knew that they worked, and eventually I got a call from Jan Schulten in Holland saying, we understand that you're working with color and we're very interested. But that was after eight years of kind of slogging away, but I really had to learn homeopathy. I had to become certified. I had to have the credibility of homeopathy under my belt before I could even speak publicly. After 10 years, I wrote a book called Homeopathic Color Remedies, and then 14 years after that, after the beginning, I did homeopathic color and sound remedies because by then I had proved the musical scale. So these color remedies are all chakra related. And it's wonderful that there are so many of you from India who I don't need to explain the chakra system to. The chakras are vortexes of energy that run down, down the spine. And the colors are related to classical uh, Hindu studies on the, on the chakra. I found it was, I've since expanded my scope. I, I included um, archangels. I included holy water from holy sites around the world, gem elixirs. I've just proved the Solbaggio sound remedies, which are stunningly beautiful. They were the, they are the sounds of Gregorian chant. They all uh, resonate. They also resonate with the chakras. I've been doing yoga for, 52 years, and it's a system I love and follow. So if it isn't within your framework, um, just please hold, hold the possibility that these color remedies have a way of working on the physical, the emotional, the mental, and I do believe at some level the spiritual. So I'll start with the root chakra, right lodged at the base of the spine. And I see the essential quality of the root chakra as trust in life, trust in life as the foundation of the root chakra. The qualities, I let me just say this. In, in the Sanskrit teachings, the chakras were linked with gods and goddesses. They were linked with myth. What I've seen by linking these chakras to psychological issues is it gives us an understanding of the people we work with today. So these are the qualities that, that I felt were important for the root chakra. Patience, 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 patience. What I found that particularly here in the West is people are incredibly impatient. ADD does not describe the level of, of impatience and irritability that we see with our clients. And it's a, for me, it's a sign that the root chakra is not functional, that there is dysfunction in the root chakra. There is a lack of grounding, a lack of trust in life. Um, stability is a quality of the root chakra. It helps us through change. It keeps us anchored through change, which I think particularly in the past two and a half years since, since COVID, we are seeing tremendous instability. Security and safety, which really helps us treat people who have a victim mentality. It helps create a stronger foundation. Being safe is everything. You can't really even take a case if somebody doesn't feel safe with you. I believe that structure, the structure of one's life is also related to the qualities of the root chakra. Structure, how you structure your life to support the God-given gifts you have is really essential. The other is order, that wonderful phrase of Kent that I love, order in the economy. It brings order out of chaos for those who have challenges keeping their lives in order. 
And ultimately, I believe that chakras have a right. And the right of the root chakra is the right to one's own life. When people have issues about duty, obligation, following the family way, not being able to live their life in the way that they choose to do, you are seeing a violation of the right to the root chakra. So those are the qualities that I see. But let me say this about red. It's a very uh, volatile remedy to give. And I hesitate to give it to anybody over 50. Usually what I give is magenta, which is made of red, green, and violet light. So magenta is a, is a softer ride. It's much smoother. When you give red, you will see volatility and you need to support your clients. But I will say this, after I met Jan Shulton in um, 97, he came, he came to London in 97 to give his first seminar on uh, homeopathy and minerals using the, uh, the elements of the periodic table. It was fascinating to meet him. And I, at that time, I was very discouraged about the color remedies and had thrown away eight years of proofings. <laughs> just, I just went, can't do this one anymore. And he said to me, do them again, but get out of the way, get out of your own way, find people to do these proofings for you because you're way too involved. It was brilliant advice that I took and I found homeopaths to do the provings. And one of the provers, or one of the homeopaths had a woman who was incontinent in her bowels and was going to have a colostomy within weeks. And they asked her if she would be willing to try one of the color remedies and she said yes. The homeopath gave her red and she got control of her bowels and never had any more problems. I would never have been able to have a case like that on my table. It just, that isn't the kind of cases that came through my door. So incredibly thankful to the homeopaths who were willing to do the provings. And within three months, we had all the colors proved. And then we started the work of collation, collating the, the symptoms. But I'm so grateful to these people who gave me guidance and showed me what was possible. And I still marvel at it. Uh, so one thing I want to say about um, the root chakra. The mental qualities are organization, administration, patience, trust, creating structure that supports your life, and being grounded in the reality of the here and now. The spiritual affinity is community, tribe, family, ancestors, and even past lives. This is, I believe, the home of the Soric Myasa. These color remedies go deep in the economy, but I would not even pretend to say that they can reverse serious pathology or treat miasms. I think that they have their place in practice. If you're giving a well-indicated remedy and it gets stuck, you might want to consider giving a color remedy. And I would suggest you start low. I've never potentized these above a 30. I think 30 is high enough. And, in the very beginning of doing this work, I met an anthroposophist, um, the people who study this Rudolf Steiner's uh, work. And this man said, we work in the realm of imponderables. And my suggestion is you never go above a 30. And I've held to that. I've held it to that with all the imponderables. We don't know how volatile they can be at a higher potency. And I'm not about to give anything above a 30. Okay, Kavita, we can move on to the sacral chakra. Ready? Thank you. I really appreciate you doing this, Kavita. I'm sorry, I don't have to deal with technology and I can just talk about this work. So the sacral chakra sits right above the root chakra in the area of the, of the belly, the lower belly. Its color is orange. Its musical note is D. The archangel that I work with is Metatron. And the holy water, I, I use holy water and gem elixirs from time to time. I believe in one remedy at a time. So these are the uh, qualities of the root chakra. The right to pleasure, ease and happiness is the foundation. 
of the sacral chakra, health, beauty, and resiliency for people who have issues with self-love, vitality, feeling that they are not enough, even for health. I've had a lot of success with this color because it is the color of energy. It is the color of vitality and resiliency. It's the color of the sacral chakra is ruled. It's ruled at a very deep level by spiritual entities and the gods and goddesses. It's ruled by the god of Indian goddess Lakshmi and the archangel Metatron. Uh, this brings unconditional love, forgiveness, and gratitude. The freedom of unconditional love helps, helps us enjoy life more fully. And now you can use this orange for people who are unforgiving, who hold grudges, who are filled with anger and hatred. If you give red, you're going to get a huge amount of volatility, a lot of anger came up in the provings. But orange is milder, it's softer, it's more, it's more forgiving. So I, people who, you know, that nightmare state where they just hold on and they're angry and they, they're, they hold their resentment forever, this is a sweet color and it helps people let go into ease and pleasure and delight. It works for people who have problems with money. It helps. Sacral chakra is about abundance, pleasure, unconditional love, and health. So people who have problems with making money, holding on to money, this is a very good remedy and it really helps. You can give it in a 6X once or twice a day for weeks on end. When I add the colors, and I have done this for people who are really joyless, I have added the color pink. And pink and orange is what we call a fiesta. It's a party. I did a lot of work in the field of autism and gave pink and orange to a little 14 year old autistic girl who was in an institution in England where I, I worked with the staff and I worked with the, uh, the inmates. This little girl had been abandoned on the streets of Bristol. When they found her, she was naked with cigarette burns all over her body. She was really compromised and couldn't talk. <coughs> Pardon me. So when she was she was given stromonium. She was given deep acting homeopathic remedies, but she she quieted down. She was quite savage, really, for a long time. She would smear her feces on the wall, and, and she was just a mess. She would scream and yell if somebody touched her. And she stromonium was a perfect remedy for it. Really calmed her down, quieted her. But she was robotic. She was joyless. So I gave her a very low dose of pink and orange and she started talking. She said, I want a party on the unit, <laughs> which was remarkable. She calmed down. They were able to train her to do some menial tasks. These children in this institution were highly compromised. But I saw how it worked and it opened her up. And she learned how to ride a bicycle. But these are small things, but for children like that, they're very big things, very big things. She learned how to bathe herself and take care of herself. And I thought orange just did wonders for her. I've given it for autoimmune deficiency a lot over the years. People with ME and MS and just compromised immunity do very very well on orange it's a it's a wonderful color can you pull this down a bit and we can see the can you yes thank you thank you so the <clears throat> the location is the pelvic area the element is water which run, rules emotion the physical body the seat of immunity uh, reliance, resiliency, mobility, stamina, sexuality, um, retention of body fluids, pleasure, abundance will be. These are the issues that orange addresses. It helps with, uh, with 
the hormone system. It helps with depression. It helps balance emotions. It works with forgiveness and gratitude, pleasure. It, the right of this chakra is the right to enjoy oneself and delight in life and experience pleasure, be creative and find abundance. The mental qualities, people who really live in lack, lack mentality, there's not enough. There's just not enough of anything good in their life. So it helps bring a sense of pleasure and plenty of being able to thrive, to experience unconditional love from the creator and find happiness. I think the spiritual affinities are knowing that who you are and what you do and what you have are enough. Miasm, of course, is a psychotic miasm, overproduction, just excess. And <clears throat> when you see that kind of excess at some level, what you're seeing is underneath that is a belief that one is not enough. There's a great Dutch expression, genuk e genuk, enough is enough. And this is the chakra that one needs to know that who one is, what one does and what one has is enough. This chakra is the most abused of all chakras in the human energy system. It's blown wide open and many young people who've done drugs and drink and just that excess. So it helps to bring that energy in, give it a, give it a boundary, a healthy boundary which is what we don't see too often in the psychotic minds. Okay, we can move on to the solar plexus. I hope you have questions. I have delighting questions. So the solar plexus, we know, right under the nerve ganglion of the diaphragm, color is yellow, the note is E, the archangelic presence is the archangel Uriel. This is ruled by the fire element. This is about worth. For me, the solar plexus is about self-worth. Knowing that you are worthy of what you say you want. Sometimes I ask people, what do you have to do to prove you're worthy? And they, you, know, you can feel their minds working and they, well, if I do this and if I have that, then I'm worthy. The truth of it is, self-worth is a given to humanity. And there's nothing we have to do to prove we are worthy. We are worthy because we exist. So when people have issues with self-love and self-worth, self-esteem, confidence in life, the ability to manifest what you want and need for your life, and freedom of choice. Ultimately, this comes down to freedom of choice, the ability to choose what and who we love at the center. This is at the center of our life. This is a core issue. And so the color yellow, it, it's the color that has the most light. It's radiant. Yellow is radiant. And then you have this fire element, which just expands and expands um, the field. So I use this for low confidence, for lack of faith in the goodness of life, for fear of the future. This is a color we're using a lot at the moment. People are really frightened. They're in fear. And uh, they, they have lost confidence in life. The Jews have a beautiful expression. The Jews say, we need confidence for life. And I love that expression. And I've taken it and adopted it. To have confidence for life. That knowing that life will see you through. This I use for low confidence, lack of faith in the goodness of life, fear of the future. Can we scroll down, please, or scroll up? Thank you. This is, as I said, located in the nerve ganglion over the stomach. And so you may see a lot of digestive issues, pancreatic issues, spleen issues, stomach issues, hyperacidity, definitely liver and gallbladder issues. It really helps. It's like a silica. It's what you'd give silica for, uh, like a podium for. These are the remedies that are very prevalent. And, and a little bit of yellow goes a long way. It's the right to know your own power. And it works. Um, this is a beautiful color. And it works so well to help people gain confidence. So the spiritual affinity is the right use of power 
not a narcissistic use of power, the right use of power, believing you are worthy of what you say you want. And I relate this to the syphilitic miasm, which is so broken down. And it really seems to affect, we saw that it had in the Fruvings bone pains, which are very, very syphilitic. So those three lower chakras, the root chakra, the sacral, and the solar plexus are about family, community, tribe. They are about how we function and move in the world. And when I've used the color remedies and also the sound remedies, the note for this is the note E. I will sometimes give them together, it depends. Colors relate to the etheric field. In, the, in this realm of subtle bodies, you have the physical body, then you have the energetic body, which is known as the etheric field. And the etheric field is where the chakras are lined up. And it's the realm of energy. The next field is called the astral body. And the astral body is the mental body. You know how we use aversion and desire in homeopathy to find a remedy? The astral body is all about aversion and desire, what they want, what they don't want, and it works on the mental level. So the last field that I work with is called the egoic body, which is the spiritual body. It's where the spirit and the soul live within that body, and we don't touch that in homeopathy. Kent once said, we never violate the will of man, and I've listened to that, and I believe that that is true. One of the problems that I see with um, heroic medication, allopathic beds, is that it rents the will. It takes the will of man and it just tears it apart. It's too heroic, it's too strong. And so what I see often is that the will needs to be reanimated. And the will, the way I've done that is with the color remedies, many of the color remedies, and creating small exercises for people who have no will, who can't just stay on the couch and watch TV. I've given exercises like walk around the block once a day, then twice a day, then three times a day. Small exercises to reanimate the will. That's one of the most serious problems that I see with medication. Thank you, Kavitha. <laughs> the next, above the diaphragm, when we work with the energies above the diaphragm. We work with relationship. And the heart chakra is the center of the human energy system, like love should be, hopefully, the center of our lives. This is about the ability to open one's heart to the flow of love, and it's foundational to the heart chakra. The heart chakra is the only chakra that has two colors. It has pink for mother love and green for tranquility. The note that we use is F and the Archangel Raphael, who brings us the love of God. So this is about brotherhood and sisterhood, being at one with others in love and trust and allowing the good to flow in. Good for those who experience separation, isolation, excommunication, divorce, people who've left their communities. We see a lot of that in our work, all of us, people being isolated, being alone. I've used this so often. I've used pink and green so often, and I love to share a case that I had many years ago of a woman in her late 60s whose husband had Alzheimer's, whose children lived thousands of miles away, and who had lost her son in a tragic drowning. And she came for lung problems. I was living up near Seattle, in the cold, wet of the Pacific Northwest, where there's a lot of chest issues. And she came, she was given a lot of remedies, including tuberculinum, which did her a lot of good, vaselinum. But she was so isolated, so I gave her pink, and she loved it. She told me that she went home, and after taking it, she took a dressing room or a small closet and painted it all pink, had a rocking chair, painted it pink, she crocheted a pink shawl that she wore and she would sit in meditation in her pink room with a pink light, with her pink shawl and pray daily. And I thought that was, I thought that was lovely. And she started to heal and 
her heart started to mend because her children who lived in another country came home to be with her and help her take care of her small holding. She had a, a small ranch and it was hard for her to maintain things. And she had to look after her husband who was dying of Alzheimer's. So the girls came back and she had family and community again and she really healed up so beautifully on the peak. I'm giving green to people who are stressed, highly stressed. It's a wonderful color to bring the energy back down to center. The qualities I said are brotherhood and sisterhood, peace. The essence of all happiness is peace. Good for those who are stressed over situations, relationships, finances, people who try hard to prove their worth to others. It's about love the elixir of life, the essence of all goodness that allow us to make wholesome choices, wonderful connections, and strengthen our being to fight the good fight. This center opens the channel of love to flow with God's grace and goodness for those who suffer from loss of love, who long for it from the depth of their being and who feel they never have, never have been loved. It's a very sweet, calming, centering, joyful both these remedies pink and green they really really work beautifully on the center we scroll up please Vita, thank you so the center of the heart chakra is a little to the left of center the element is air feeds the lung of heart the color green and pink the note f the physical body the heart the lungs the arms the hands the fingers then i would definitely include the blood hormone, the hormones from the thymus gland, the emotional issues to allow love to be the center of your life, to find peace, love and joy, brotherhood and unity, the right to be able to give and to receive love, to be receptive to the good, to release anger and enmity, fear, doubt, and to release the inhibition to experience love. The miasm obviously is the tubercular miasm, which works so strongly on our lungs. Okay, let's move to the throat chakra. Throat chakra obviously governs the internal and external throat, but it also governs the mouth, the teeth, the tongue, and the ears. Uh, all the chakras have senses. So the root chakra is the sense of smell. The sacral chakra is, the, is appetite, the ability to taste food. The solar plexus, uh, the sense is vision. The heart is touch. And the throat chakra uh, is hearing. So this is about living in integrity, walking our talk, speaking the truth. We see a lot, I have a lot of clients who are very blocked in the throat chakra women particularly with thyroid issues and I do believe that thyroid issues can be transformed when you make a commitment to truth telling when you are willing to tell the truth about what you feel and what you think and what is so for you as an individual the throat chakra becomes a muscle it actually opens up and we find that people have clearer communication they are more committed to truth their will gets stronger and they become more creative. Choosing to live in integrity and being a truth teller is the sign of a highly developed and mature person. This doesn't happen when you're 20, it doesn't happen when you're 30. This starts to develop in the 40s. And by the time people are in their 50s and 60s, truth becomes a very important thing for them. This works on Clear communication, timidity, fearfulness, being uncomfortable speaking the truth. And we know as homeopaths, truth is so essential. How it helps us find the remedies we need for our clients is when we can work together in a state of truth. To experience one's inner truth and the higher truth of God for those who cannot hear their own guidance, or for those who do not value spiritual truths, this the color is turquoise and the note G. 
And this really does work. It helps with problems with the teeth. I've given it when people have had swollen glands or to, even toothache, it works. People become more creative when they've had this color. Their self-expression is richer and deeper and they <clears throat> are better able to tap into the God-given gifts they've been able to hopefully realize. Good for those who are derivative and are, are afraid to experience their own true nature. We see this a lot with young people trying to be like movie stars or celebrities or people who don't really have their own sense of personal identity. Like like a podium, we would give like a podium for lack of personal identity. You might see that it does, that turquoise does its work there to help people become more identified with their own truth. So there is no element here. This is the realm of your consciousness. It works, as I said, on the mouth, teeth, tongue, gums, internal, external, throat, the ears, the neck. It works on the thyroid and parathyroid. The emotional issues are speaking your truth, being creative, clear communication, and developing a good will. Not just good will, but being able to use your will in a good way. The rights are to express your truth and to live in integrity, to claim your right to self-expression and honor your creative gifts. The miasm, I believe, is the acute miasm because what goes first is always the throat. I don't know if you saw it with COVID-19, first symptom, always the throat. We, it's, a, it's a weak chakra because it sits so close to the surface of the body. It's not deep in the center like the sacral chakra or even the heart chakra. The throat chakra is very close to the surface and it really grows and expands when people make the commitment to truth telling. Okay, brow chakra. Thank you. Brow chakra located here in the third eye. Color is indigo blue, that beautiful deep rich blue. The note is A, this is the essence of the goddess the qualities of the brow chakra are wisdom, to be able to see the wisdom in all the challenges of our lives, to see that real healing to me is being able to see that the pain, suffering, trauma, and losses of our lives have made us who we are. To me, that is wisdom. Good for those who are unable to tap into their higher guidance or who are undergoing very painful and stressful initiations. Intuition, it will open the intu intuition so that you're able to know what you know. If you can move from that place without fear or anxiety. Good for those who do not trust their intuition or inner voice. For those who seek answers in science, rationality, and herd mentality without the balance of inner guidance. I, you do not want somebody living in the realm of irrationality or um, a total belief that everything they believe is correct. You want balance, especially in the mind. Being able to pull on your intuition, listen to your inner guidance, and trust the external world that gives us science and rational thinking and useful information. But we tend to be much more uh, left brain than right brain especially in the realm of technology. So it really helps people find balance and find their inner guidance. Knowledge, knowledge is not information. Let me make this one really clear. We need information to be able to get through the day, remember our passwords, use technology, but knowledge is ancient and it comes from the depth of our being. Knowledge is knowing what you know at the deepest level. I think that this is also a color for people who are really spaced out, really unable to think clearly. When I started homeopathy, I was a very perceptive person. And one of my teachers said, Ambika, put your pendulum away and learn to think. 
and what great advice that was. We are still, 25 years later, very, very good friends. He came to homeopathy as a chemist. I came to homeopathy as an artist. And he was my clinical tutor. And God bless him for what he taught me. He taught me how to dot my I's and cross my T's. He's the one who said, I want you to, to apply for the Society of Homeopaths. And I was terrified at the idea of doing it. I took some blue and I passed the exams and, the, and what was required. And I'm really glad I did. I've got a lot of confidence in myself from using this color. And I use it for people who are very unsure or who are, you know, just not, not in their rational mind. Okay, let's scroll up. Thank you. So you can use this for the senses. It helps bring the senses up. It's very good for the eyes, for balancing both lobes of the brain. It works, I think, to balance the anterior, posterior, pituitary. It gives clear thought, detachment from reactive emotions, control of anger and resentment, doubt, and cynicism. It gives it clarity, that beautiful color. It is the color that is the most loved color in, in the planet. Everybody, particularly men, love this color of deep, rich blue. The emotional issues are clear thought, and uh, the right is to learn to think for oneself without prejudice, without malice. The mental qualities are assessment, insight, objectivity, and visionary thinking. Visionary thinking is the ability to use both sides of the brain to have clear solutions to one's problems. A spiritual affinity is to connect yourself to the higher mind to the spiritual self, and I think it works on all my essence. Okay, let's do the crown chakra, which sits right at the top of the head. The color is violet, the note is B. This is the Christ-like essence. This is the realm of bliss, beauty, and serenity. It helps us overcome negativity that we see in everyday life, to live in truth, and know that life is eternal with no beginning and no end. It's true samadhi. Good to help people release their physical and emotional pain. It does help relieve pain because it works on the nerves. It helps people see the great beauty in life, that this earth plane is a spiritual realm, that it, the beauty abounds everywhere. To love the beauty in people, to love the beauty in animals and plants and the elements of nature, and to know that beauty is sacred. It's good for those who can find no beauty in the world around them. It helps people sleep. I give pink and violet for, for sleep, and it really calms people down, and it helps them get good rest. Serenity is an important quality to to cultivate in today's world, and it helps bring serenity and tranquility beyond measure. It's the full acceptance of oneself along with the choices we make for our life. It helps people embrace positive choice, what I call wholesome choices, and it's great for reactive, agitated people who are stuck in the negativity. It helps ease their this filling here to sucked into negativity of the world. People who are drawn into that, into the darkness, who can't pull back and look around and see the beauty of life, who can't hear bird song, who can't see the, the beauty of a baby or a young tot. Or... This color has its place. They all have their place, obviously. And my suggestion is you start low, start with a six, and give it a chance to work. You can move up to a 12C, you've got an 18C, and a 30C, which, um, which is as far as I go with the color and sound remedies. Like I said, I, I moved on to holy water remedies, to the sulfagio remedies I'm doing now. Uh, to the Archangel Remedies. There are five Archangels that I have worked with for many years. 
that are that do work in the chakras. They help people find strength and courage and devotion. I, I love this realm of the imponderables. I spend a lot of time working with these remedies and I will retire next March from working with clinical pathology. I've reached the point where I just want to focus on writing and developing more knowledge and uh, evidence-based use for the, the imponderables. They're, they're forgotten. They're, uh, and I forgot them too. Let me say, doing clinical pathology, I never started with, with the imponderables. I always went into finding the best possible remedy for my clients, treating the miasmas. These came last. They were a second thought. But I do think that they are forgotten in that, especially now with the COVID vaccine, one of the things I'm seeing and my colleagues are seeing is a lack of joy in people. It's not just the toxicity of the vaccine. It's like they say the God essence has been cut off. And so these colors and sound remedies, the, these imponderables, uh, my hope is that they can reconnect people to source because without that people just become drones so that's my take on, the, on these um, i'd love to hear your questions and uh, share more with you thank you for listening okay uh, do we open this up to questions kavita Ambika, that was wonderful and Dr. Shrija will take some questions and would you like to go Spectrum and the card Ambika? I'm just seeing. Oh yes, I'm sorry, I forgot Spectrum. Yes, let's do Spectrum, absolutely. Spectrum and the cord. Spectrum is all colors, the rainbow, and the cord is all the notes of the musical uh, chord. And these are people, I give these remedies only when people are completely burned out, exhausted, recovering from major illness or surgery. Um, I've given them to drug addicts. I've given them to alcoholics. I've given them to people who had severe surgery. It revives the whole human energy system. Every chakra lights up with this. But you do need to be careful if you're dealing with somebody who is a very low uh, vital force, you don't want to overstimulate the system with those hot colors, those lower red, orange, and yellow. So my suggestion is start with a six, give one dose and see how it works. And over time, build up to perhaps a 12C or even a 30C. It revives what has been damaged and worn out. And I used it, I'll tell you one case. A, a woman was brought into my clinic about 25 years ago when I was first started doing the color remedies. And she had HIV AIDS and she had cancer. She, she was really, she had to be carried in. And she was terminal. And I couldn't get a case. And with dying people, those of you who work with dying people, it's very hard to get a good case. You need a vital force to have symptoms. And her vital force was so diminished. And I really struggled to get a case. So I gave her, I gave her a single dose of um, spectrum and sent her home. This woman could not do anything for herself. She couldn't clean her apartment. She couldn't bathe herself. She couldn't wash her hair. She could barely dress herself. And she had a very tragic life, tragic life. She had five children, by, each by a different father. She had no happiness, no joy, no love in her life. She had a seriously awful life. About three days after I gave her the remedy, her social worker who had brought her in, he was one of my clients, that's how she came to me. He said, what did you give her? I said, 
<laughs> it frightened us. Why? What happened? He said, she could clean her apartment. She could wash her hair. She could bathe herself. She could dress herself. She's called her children to her to reconcile with them. This woman had a very sweet death, a very sweet passing. She did not have a good life, but she had a good passing. And I'm very grateful that I had the courage to give her the spectrum. And if I'd had cord made at the time, I would have given her that too. So that was a case that changed my life and, and gave me the confidence to be able to start prescribing. Okay. Um, are we ready for some questions? Yes, ma'am. Uh, there's a question from Poonam Chablani. Is it like Reiki healing? Do you energize homeo meds with color and give it to patient? I'm, I'm aware of visualization and color meditation. Can you throw some light on it? Yes, it, they correspond with conventional color healing, but they are homeopathic dilutions. They are not Reiki. It's not, it's not hands-on healing. These are homeopathic remedies prepared in dilution in the homeopathic Hanumanian way. They were first made at Helios Pharmacy in, 19, in 1993. John Morgan potentized these remedies. And uh, three years ago, they took the sound remedies up to 30C. I had made the sound remedies up to 6X and never felt it was appropriate to go any higher than 6x because they're very, very strong. Sound is much stronger than color. So uh, Helios got in touch with me and they said, it's time. So we potentized it up to a 30. But it is, home let me say this, these are homeopathic preparations. And though I don't do Reiki, I certainly had it, but I don't do it. I use these remedies for color, for energy, to feed the energy bodies to feed the chakras. For me, the chakras are real. They are entities of, you know, they are crucibles of energy that feed ductless glands, that feed organs and systems. And for me, it's a system that works. It's ancient. What is it? 18,000 years of, of ancient uh, Hindu practice with these chakras. I love them. And I can't write enough about them. I've got a new book called The Chakra Code, which puts together my experience and 50 years of working with them. That's my model. It's my model. It may not be your model, but it works for me. And I'm not asking you to take it on, but color healing is, has a, a resonance that is compatible with these remedies. These remedies are not out in left field. They are compatible with all forms of color healing. I hope that answers your question. If it doesn't, <laughs> please ask me again to, to go into it a little deeper. Okay, there's another question, ma'am, uh, from Mary Hernandez. Can you speak about how you use sound remedies and where can one obtain the sound remedies? Sure. Sound remedies came long after the color remedies. I made the sound remedies up in the mountains of New Mexico with a beautiful crystal ball and um, a bowl and tuning forks. And then I proved them. I, I ran a school out of Chicago at the time and my students were more than willing to prove the sound remedies. And they proved to be so strong. So deeply, deeply strong, much stronger in a low potency than the color remedies. I'll just tell you one story. We were proving orange and the school had just started. So the students didn't really know one another very well. And everybody was kind of, they came from all parts of the U.S. and they were quiet and, and very um, polite. So we proved orange in the morning and then we decided to go to Whole Foods to get some lunch. And we walked, people started walking two by two and laughing, it's a color of joy. And we all got our lunch and all of us had orange food, carrots and carrot soup and pumpkin and 
it was the fall so pumpkin was out and it was just amazing we all started laughing everybody got to know one another it was very sweet indeed to see what orange did that it brought people together and it was a happy remedy but the sound sound is works on the astral field and it has an intensity that is stronger than the etheric body stronger than the chakras because it works on the mind that's why i started working with the solfagios they're intense Manu LaRose is a homeopath up in Canada, in, um, Sudbury, uh, Ontario. Has, she showed me how she was working with sound remedies, with uh, tuning forks. And I thought, I want to potentize these. She was working with the direct, the direct um, tuning fork. I thought, I want to potentize this. I love potency. I'm a homeopath. This is what I do. So... I recently took the solfagios, there are nine of them, and I'm doing provings now. Uh, you can get color and sound remedies from me, and you can get them from Helios. I don't know who else carries them. But um, let me know if this is something that you're interested in, if anybody's interested in proving the solfagios. Jenny Tree, who is one of my clinical tutors up in, in England, has just offered to do provings of the solfagios. Sound remedies are intense. And the solfagios, I found tuning forks that work on the organs, the hormones, and the angelic realm. So I'm gonna be purchasing all those and making remedies out of those sounds as well. I'm really into sounds, but I have to wait to retire next March before I can really dive into this. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I'm really committed to the imponderables. They are, they are the icing on the cake, the cherry on top of the icing of the cake. They are, they are that spiritual connection to source that are gentle, they are safe, they are effective. To my knowledge, I have never seen a serious aggravation I have never seen anybody not respond. They go in, they go in gently and they are absorbed in the economy. They don't mess up a case. Now, how good does that get? To me, that's huge because I always start with a homeopathic remedy. I don't start with these. When I have a clinical case, I dive in. And when I teach my students, I want them to do proper homeopathy. Don't go giving a color. Find out what's going on and treat in the best and most integritous way you know how. And then use a color or sound remedy. See what's needed. But the spiritual realm cannot be forgotten. It's especially today where, where these medications and drugs and vaccines just cut off that cord to God. I'm sorry, but I think without that, what are we doing? getting them functional. What about happiness? What about joy? What about delight? What about creativity? Those things to me are located in the realm of the imponderables. I hope that helps. <laughs> There's another question from Padmaja Rao Vorinan. Are these remedies are separate or you take the case taking homeopathically or they potentized homeopathically? You take the case as a homeopath. You take the case. You get a great history. What can we do without history? Nothing. But they were not homeopaths. We're, we're, we're allopathically prescribing. I love case history. I mean, I really spent, I have a 13 page health intake form and I studied history at university. I love history. We want the best possible history, but we want to know who lives in that body, who lives in that mind, who lives in that spirit. Yes, they are potentized homeopathically and they are, you have to look and see what needs healing. Is this a person who needs confidence? Is this a person who needs grounding? 
Is this a person who needs to be able to express themselves or think more clearly or make the spiritual connection? Is this a person who needs a good night's sleep? You know, sleep is a terrible issue. They say it's the single worst problem in the world next to alcoholism. It's lack of good sleep. So we want to be able to help people in the best way we can. My suggestion is if you use them, as I said, start low, see how they work. Take some yourself. Jeremy Shear once said at a conference, if you want to know how a remedy works, take get up and take a 30C in the morning. I thought that was like, really? But yes, find out how they work. They're beautiful. They're, they were God-given, that's all I can say. I didn't have the mentality to create this myself. These were, these were given to me. And it took me a long, long time to be able to ground myself and educate, become educated in homeopathy, to be able to present them to the world in an ethical way. The, the same question from Padmajara Vore. Do you give this remedy after trying a polycrest or these only as similar? What are the results you experienced with this now? Could you repeat the question? Do you give this remedy after trying a polycrest or this remedy only as a similar? No, I... What I, are the results? I, yes, I usually start not necessarily with a polycrest, with with a homeopathic remedy. Sometimes you go beyond the polycrest, but with a homeopathic, I always start a case with a homeopathic remedy, always. And sometimes then I'll move into a miasmatic remedy before I even consider giving the color remedies. Let me tell you that most people, when you say you're giving them a dose of pink, or you're giving them a dose of yellow, they're not quite prepared for that. So I, I a classically trained homeopath, I go and give, take a proper case, I give the remedy. But then as we move into deeper levels of knowing one another and understanding what the case is, I will present these remedies. I don't start with them. No. First of all, I never had the belief that they were strong enough, but I think they are strong. They're very strong as a similimum. And I've I've seen cases, John Melnicek out in San Francisco works with autism, gave yellow to an autistic boy and his entire autistic, his whole symptomology totally disappeared. I didn't believe it. I have to tell you, he presented that at a conference, at a national center conference. I, I was stunned when I heard that. Like, I kept saying, really? All the symptoms? He said, all the symptoms. I'm not trained like that. I, I like the rem I like remedies. <laughs> I use them. I come to the, you know, these are second or third or fourth or fifth remedies. They're not, I don't start a case of a color or sound remedy. That's me. But I hear stories about people who've had extraordinary results giving the color remedy or the sound remedy. God bless them. I just don't. That's just me. More questions? No, ma'am, that's it. Okay. Well, thank you very much for listening. And um, I'm very grateful to be able to present this work to people. If you're interested in becoming a prover for the Solfagios, get in touch. If you're interested in purchasing the book, uh, Healing and Health with Homeopathic Color and Sound Remedies, let me know. If you're interested in purchasing kits, let me know. My website is lifeenergymedicine.com. That's one word, lifeenergymedicine.com. Thank you so much for having me on. I will be back in a minute. I um, just need to take a small break and I'll be back to, to hear the Thank doctor. Thank you so much, um, Ambika. Do you have a minute? Just if, is that okay? We will wait for you otherwise. Um, no, go ahead and, and ask. Okay, <laughs> because just uh, one minute and we did share your email ID and uh, website in the chat. And uh, thank you so much for this wonderful presentation, Ambika. And uh, I know I have successfully used all the color and sound remedies and saw results. So I really encourage everyone to use these color and sound remedies in their um, practice. 
So to name few like PCOS, autism, depression, hyperactivity, and many digestive disorders and many. And uh, so thank you once again, Ambika. We will bring you back and we would like to take privilege to honor your gracious presence and for your precious time in sharing your knowledge and wisdom with our study group today with our CAS certificate. Please kindly accept from our team. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's lovely. Thank you so much, Kavita. How beautiful is that? Thank you so much, Ambika. And now we will honor our second speaker. I'll be back. Thank you. Thank you. Event on June 5th, uh, 9 p.m., we have Dr. Manish Bhatia, founder and director of Hpati.com, will be sharing his knowledge on clinical application of organon in practice. And many more renowned homeopaths are lined up for our CAR webinars. And today we have with us Many of our CAR volunteers, Dr. Shrija, our CAR coordinator, Dr. Nupursha, Dr. Mamata, Dr. Poonam Chaplani, and many more CAR volunteers watching on the Facebook Live and many participants. Once again, I thank CAR Kumipati Steady Group team for the continuous selfless support in all, for making all these activities so beautiful. Always thank all the participants for their undivided attention and inspiration. And we always thank universe and all the dignitaries of car speakers at our webinars. So with this, and Dr. Srija, would you like to say anything? Uh, yes, yes ma'am. Uh, you can fill the job form. Uh, I have shared the link in the chat to get your certificates. Please try to submit in one to two days. And uh, for any queries, you can reach us on carstudygroup at gmail.com. And also you can find the updates and the upcoming webinar details on our social media, like on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn pages. The group name is like Ka Homeopathy Study Group. And also you can watch the recordings on YouTube channel, Kavita Kukunur. Please try to reach us for any queries. You can email us anytime. And with your permission, Dr. Sharam, shall we end the webinar? Yeah, it was a real pleasure. Thank you so much again, Thor. It was a wonderful um, opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Sharam and everyone. And uh, Dr. Shrija, would you like to end the webinar, please? Yes, ma'am. Thank you all. See you at next webinar. Thank you.